My name's Matty Batsanillis, or Matty Bats, as some people call me. And I'm a builder, I love fishing though. Us as a family, we're very family oriented. We've got four brothers and uh, we've grown up quite close. We're five and a half years apart from top to bottom. So we're pretty good mates, best mates, and we do everything together. So fishing is just one of those things that happily and brings us quite well together. We are currently in 1770. We call this God's country, home of the almighty Red Emperor. That initial hit, catching Red Emperor, it's just, it's all about that initial hit. That initial swamp, that big head, head bob. And you're just like, what is this bloody freight train on the end of this rod? And it goes until you get five, 10 meters off the bottom and you are in all sorts. It's got you bent over and yeah, you're looking like a little bitch. Everything works around Red Emperor. And I've got this brother who's, uh, He's not all there, he's got a few screws loose and all he cares about is catching Red Emperor and he's that sick, he won't go home until he's got a Red Emperor. Fortunately, not for myself but for everyone else on that boat, he was able to catch a Red Emperor in a couple of minutes and he had a smile from ear to ear. My name's Peter Batanoulis, builder by trade, but try to be a fisherman full time. It's quite hard to do sometimes, but uh, we do half half sometimes. Bats Fishing, uh, it's a shortened version of our last name, Batanoulis. Um, so just B-A-T-S, easy going, just easy to say, so long Greek name is quite hard to say sometimes. The style of fishing I like to do is always Red Emperor. Love my Red Emperor. Try to just do as much as that as I can. Lately we've been doing a bit of top water stuff, uh, just trying to just smash GTs, Spanish, anything that sort of stick baiting you can do. But we love our bottom fishing, just bait fishing. Um, just catching a lot of fish, sort of reef species is what we love doing. The boys reckon I can speak to Red Emperor. Um, I'm not going to say I can speak to them, but I can sort of sometimes get the gist of what they're doing. There's days that they might hang on a rock, there's days they might be off the rock. A lot of the guys ask us all the time, like, what, 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 where do you find the Red Emperor and where are they, how do they feed, what they do? And a lot of guys go, oh yep, I found this awesome Red Rock and it's, you know, I just couldn't get fish off it. There's fish there, but I can't get them. And I'm like, look, you probably found a big pinnacle. Nine times out of 10, the pinnacle is three, four meters high and the fish, the stuff I'm fishing is like a meter. And I tell them they don't believe us because they're thinking, oh, that's nothing. They come over their sounder, or what is there? There's nothing there. The, the reds somehow, they're in like a desert and then all of a sudden there's a rock and then they just hang off that rock like a cluster of just, there might be five, six of them, might be 10, 20 of them. There could be a lot of them sometimes, not a nut, like there might be two or three of them. If you can get on that rock and hold yourself on the rock, you'll tend to get the fish. Now sometimes drifting does help um, because they, they sort of graze, they look like cows, they sort of go out in the paddock and sort of just linger around, try to find some food. Um, so trying to find that rock, that isolated rock in the middle of nowhere is what you want. Usually the first drop is when you know there's gonna be fish around. It's straight away almost, the minute you get down, little taps, and then all of a sudden the big guy just muscles his way in. And yeah, the, the, the reds are the, the, probably the king sort of the, of the rock, if you want to put it that way. They sort of just muscle their way in, smash the bait. So you've got to have a bigger bait to sort of get those peckers to sort of peck, peck, peck. And then the big guy comes in, just muscles his way in, smashes him. So first drop's usually the way to go. Like you get, yeah, first, first big fish usually comes from first drop. So the Red Emperor is so powerful that their first initial bites is like a, a crunch just to, so in the past, I have had a lot of hooks straight in, bent, um, snap. So we tend to find these hooks here, which we gang up. Um, there's a company called LCAT that do make them. Um, the fly does just give it a bit of an attractant, sort of, you can sort of, it just shimmers in the light, it's, it's awesome. Um, they can't stray and they can't bend. So I've caught a lot of big sharks on them and it's just a, one less thing to sort of fail when you get that initial first bite and you're trying to get him off the bottom. There's no fail to tack, tackle, so nothing's gone up there, sort of elements to, to fail. Um, 80 pound gear is sort of what we use, 80 pound straight to the um, 80 pound braid, FG knot so the small runners can get through it. Um, yeah, just, just heavy gear and, and, and good drag systems are sort of what we go for, so yeah. We've been using Shimano products now for a little while. They're so reliable and that reliability when you get out on the water is just absolutely vital. Your rods, your boat, everything needs to be working. You know, you don't want to go taking extras all the time and taking up more room. With Shimano gear, you just don't really need to take extras unless they fall out of the boat, which uh, <laughs> we lost a rod on the way. Go-to rod and real combo would be a Terra's with a Talic of 12 or a 16. Um, just because they're a bit longer rod and when you when the reds sometimes don't want to bite hard and they just sort of finicky, you, the 
rod's got a little bit of a bend in it, so it can sort of just take that little bit of like that shock, the first shock a little bit easier than a solid jigging stick. Um, so yeah, and the 12s and the 16 talicas, they're just, yeah, they're unbreakable. And the drag is so good, you just lock them up first go and you just hold on, sort of let him do his thing in the first five, you know, five, 10, 15 seconds. And then you've got him just pump and wind up, so yeah. The main outfits we take out in the boat has slightly changed uh, in the last couple of years. So our fishing has been worked around, revolved around Red Emperor. So we're talking Talica 16, Talica 12s, Terras and Grappler um, jig sticks basically. That's what we usually take out on the boat. Now with the top water stuff, having a boat like the 360 being so versatile, we're stepping into that top water world. So we're taking, you know, big um, popping top water outfits, you know, Oceas, Grappler, Grappler P, Tens, and um, big Stellas and things like that. Commonly asked question is why do you use such big lead? So I tend to use 16 ounce or 24 ounce. Not because I've got current and, or there's too much wind or run or whatnot. It's more just get as quick as you can to the bottom and stay sort of straight up and down um, because you might be dropping two or three guys dropping and if you've got smaller sinkers, they might tend to tangle. Um, the, the bigger leads are just so you can set your rod straight onto the rock. It's got to be hard on the ground. Sometimes the lighter sinkers might go with the current, they might flutter away and you might be off the rock. So you want to sort of just be up and down on that rock. So behind me, I've got my cruise craft 360, getting towed by a Mazda BT50. Toes are like a dream, and the boat. Well, where do we even start with the boat? Start from the end, you've got a F200 that absolutely powers that boat through right up to the bow, and you've got something a little bit cheeky on the front there, and that's a Minn Kota. That thing is an absolute game changer. You just sit there, you've got a little control. Auto deploy, tap tap, straight down, spot lock. You don't even need to know how to bloody drift or anything. Just rock up to the spot, spot lock, and you're banging reds, man. These cruises come out with 210 litres of fuel. We've upgraded that to 250. It is an option. You can get 250 litres, just because we do do those reef trips, and you, it's you know you, you're travelling more, you're doing more k's out on the water. So we've gone 250, and um, it's enough for us. So we've got we've gone the Lenko trim tabs out on this boat. The main reason for it is we're doing 100k trips, and if you, if you've got a four guys on the boat, a couple guys trying to stay out of the wind, all of a sudden that boat's taking a bit of a lean. Just trim tab it up, and you're back and balanced, ready to rock and roll. Our cast deck underneath it's 300 litres of storage. We've Cruise craft, the legends over there have insulated that tank, so that's our esky. So it just minimizes now that extra bit of space that you gives you a bit of space in the back there that you have an esky. Delete that esky altogether because you've got an underground undercast deck storage. We've gone sea deck, a little bit of comfort on, on the feet, uh, and it looks absolutely awesome. Through hole transducer GT51M, it's a 600 watt tranny, so that can go up to 100 meters and read perfectly fine. When we're out on the reef chasing reds and so on, we're zoomed in. We're only reading the bottom 10 to 15 meters max. So because we're chasing, we're chasing reds and they, they're on structure, small isolated structure, and we need to be able to zoom in and find that. And we find with that 600 watt, that GT51M, it just does the job. We, we grew up fishing out of cruise crafts. Um, the old boy had a 1973 Easy Ride cruise craft, which he currently still owns. Um, my previous boat to this was a 500 Explorer. Um, once we found out that cruise craft was like a bit of a family business, um, it's exactly what we're all about. Uh, we're about that family, we're four boys, very family orientated, so it felt like they were home, it felt like they were family. I do love my bait fishing, but just recently I have changed to the old lure of, of stick baiting. Catching GTs, it's, it's actually like catching a bit like Red Amber, there's such a hard fighting fish initially, like they just go so hard and I think actually seeing the fish chase the lure or buffing at the water when it just drops and stuff like that, I don't know, it just to me like gives me that buzz and you just you can see it chasing your lure and you're like, yep, 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 bang and he's on. And shit, they they get hard, they those kind of fish, like those 20, 30 kilo GTs or, or big mackerel, now you're holding on, you're actually like almost getting bent over the side of the boat. Like they, they go hard in full drag like once again, and that's why we use heavy reels for them. This is the Shimano Rocket Dive, uh, 187 mil. I just tend to, to get sort of every fish on it. Like you get the mackerel, even small GTs, big GTs, long times like we saw yesterday, we caught a shit ton of them. Um, you just get a variety of fish. If you throw a big, massive stick bait on, you're just only targeting that real big fish. And that's good for some, but we tend to just have fun and just get catch as many as we can. And it's a lot of lure to cast too, so you're not, it's not hard on the body. We all enjoy eating our mud crabs. We love it. We grew up on mud crabs and we're actually staying at this property right now that the creek is literally right behind us. And I was able just to go throw some pots in before we got here. The tide was at oh, 12 o'clock, I think it was. I threw them in at nine, picked the pots up at just, about, just before dark. 
And yeah, we were able to get mud crabs and feed the boys for dinner. Uh, the cameraman, when he lost him in the mud, when he nearly fell over, but we got him, he was fine. And uh, oh, yeah, they're good eating mud crabs, definitely, they're tasty, so yeah.